Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Now, this is a special episode. We're going to call this The Hero and the Making. And I'm, I have with me Mr. Michael Wilburn, who is the industrial sorcerer in training. So, how you doing, Michael? Uh, I'm doing just great. Thanks for asking. All right. So, for those that don't know Michael, you may recognize his dad, Mr. Tim Wilburn. He's been on the show a couple times. And Tim and I have been back and forth. I've been on his show. And, and we have a lot of fun together. And, and Michael... I guess you created a LinkedIn profile. Is that right? Yes, sir. I saw you, you know, Tim put it out there on social about, you know, you were creating this LinkedIn profile and, and, and to connect with him, he was reaching out to some people that he knew. I, immediately I was like, Tim, we, we, we just need to get him on eco ask why this is too cool. So man, so, so congratulations on that LinkedIn profile. How's that going for you? Uh, pretty good. I've gotten a lot of connections, you know, talked with a lot of people in the manufacturing, uh, industry and it's, yeah, it's a good place. Now just set the, set the base for our listeners. So you're in ninth grade, right? Yes, I am. Okay. So we got a ninth grader and you're, you're, you know, grown up around automation and controls your whole life, right? So that's, that's pretty much, it's, it's always been there in the background for you all the time. Yep. It has. So have you, so have you always had an interest in it or is it uh, something that you've just recently started le- leaning into? Uh, I never really actually had an interest in it. I definitely enjoyed it, but yep. I wanted to become more of like those big names like doctors, policemen, racers. Uh, and like for a while, I really wanted to be like a surgeon. Yeah. Uh, but then I realized that I'm really good with uh, the controls and mechanical and especially in that industry and i started helping out my dad a lot more and i found out that i really just enjoyed it a whole lot and so now i actually like i do hands-on uh still learning but you know i help out with a lot of it right well i mean you know you are the sorcerer in training so i mean it's gonna it's gonna happen you know you gotta take your time right yep so, you know, we were talking about topics and, and Michael, we were kicking around ideas. You really brought up some things that I think would help a lot of our eco SY listeners out there and really talking about just high school and just courses that are offered, how vocation is perceived. So maybe you just walk us through kind of what's, what's going on at your high school right now from a, from a vocational standpoint. Oh, uh, at my high school, we definitely like in the terms of electives where you pick out like what classes you want to take. It's definitely uh, there's a lot in my school alone. And most of it is for uh, types of like hands on or being able to notice something and evaluate it, which are mainly like the woodworking classes, CAD room. I'm pretty sure there's also like an art room. Uh, you also have like theater and all those stuff that you can do uh, as a class for school. Right. Right. So, I mean, when you think about, you know, some of the, the more hands-on stuff of, like CAD electronics, things like that, is the cool factor there as, as much as it is, is like in the wood shop? Uh, no, not really. Uh, because the woodworking shop and the CAD room are both located in the basement. And so it's kind of bland in whatever we're working on. It's like, it's definitely very challenging, but there's nothing there to really make it fun or, so you know, want people it's in the to basement. It. So is it out of sight, out of mind type thing? Yeah. Not a lot of people uh, go down to the basement. So only people who like have been there or go to those classes know about it. <laughs> there's, and then also in the basement, it's like, we have no windows. So like, we don't know what's going on outside. And also it's like, sometimes you can just get room sick for not being able to like focus on something else yeah yeah you're literally in a dungeon it sounds like (laughs) maybe we should rename it not the basement we'll just call it the dungeon yeah the high school dungeon (laughs) that's right wow man well that's crazy that's crazy so i mean just think about perception though from a vocational standpoint i am curious like kids your age when you find that the kids actually do like you know getting into the hands-on the trades what do they like so much about it I think uh, for most people, it's being like mainly in woodworking is finally being able to, you know, do something dangerous or cutting wood and being able to make something out of it. Well, like before in middle school, all you were doing is watching people do it. So I think that's 
also pulls them in. And I think for the CAD room, it's being able to teach most of the like graduating students on how they can use CAD for their college experience. Because whenever I'm in my class, usually it's like 11th or 12th graders there. Okay. Okay. So you have older students in your class right now. Yes. So they all kind of like lumped together. So it's not broken out like different, different curriculums. It's all just one group. Yeah. One group. No kidding. Okay. Interesting. So, I mean, I'm curious if I'm a senior, so say, so say four years from now when you're a senior, yeah. will you'll be doing the same projects that a, a upcoming ninth grader would be doing right. You know, when, when you're a senior. Yes, you would be. Now, how does that, how does that work out though? I'm just, I'm curious. Where, uh, where, where's the challenge? At my school, we only, you can only take like one year CAD because after that, there's just not enough uh, rooms or there's not enough teachers to teach more about it because we have one teacher who teaches every single grade. He also does like Photoshop and uh, a bunch of other classes too. Okay. So it's a one and done. So basically once you take that CAD one time throughout your high school, you're finished with it. Yes. Got it. Okay. That makes a little more, that, that, that makes a little more sense. So, so I'm, I'm curious, Michael, what, what do you enjoy most about some of these classes? You know, what, what makes that more fun than say an English class? Uh, well, I don't really enjoy English class because, uh, there's definitely a lot more work than I really want to, because in my mind, I feel like if I'm going to do something, I should be able to do it in my own way. And that's kind of what my CAD teacher does is he lets me draw how I want to draw it. Like it's not, I have to do it step by step his right. way, which I think is a very good thing. While in English class, it's like we're working on an essay right now and we have these different types of steps of how to write the essay and you have to write the essay in a certain format or else like you fail the essay. Right. And that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not good at all. So the you like the creativity side of it. Yes. Right. You know, when we were talking to Mary Bruce, which I know you know her, you know, she brought up, you know, STEAM, not just STEM, because the A the A being the, the artistic side of, yeah. of, of science, technology, engineering, and math. And there's something to that. And she took us back to, you know, a lot, a lot when like doctors first got started, it was all, they, they had to draw. And they, had, they had to draw what they were seeing so they could pass that knowledge down. And there's something to be said for that. So, I mean, I like that, you know, it sounds like maybe the people, if, if they leaned into that a little bit more and made that aware that, that Hey, you'll have some artistic abilities to, and some flexibility, some autonomy that may get more interest. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Well, man, you just need to share that because it sounds like not many people know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it also it's like if I ask, you know, some of my friends, once you explain what CAD is, uh, they're like, I still don't understand it. Can you explain it in English? It's like, well, I just explained what it is. But there's not much to say about it. Well, some of those things, you know, when you even when you start th talk about electronics and the basics, sometimes people are just visual learners, right? Yeah, definitely. How about like your final project? So when you finish something in your CAD class, do you, what do you guys do with that? But we put it into a format page. Uh, uh -huh. And like, so we list out what the project name is, what our name is, what organization we're under. And in my, my case, it would be my high school. And then we put down the date uh, and the time that it was finished. Then we print it out into PDF and we turn it in. Okay. Well, I mean, who's to say we couldn't take those types of projects and make them into big posters. Right. And, and, yeah. and hang them around the school. And I mean, I'm sure you guys probably do some pretty cool CAD drawings. Oh yeah, and, definitely. And, and show that, you know, show it off, have some fun with it. Mm -hmm. It's just brainstorming, just brainstorming. Yeah. <laughs> you also have like, you have a lot of different stuff that you learned in that class. Like we just uh, finished up isometric views and now we're working on, uh, alignment views which are a little bit complicated but like you learn as you go along and they get harder and harder and harder but like sometimes it just gets easier and easier and easier because you learn how to do it right right then like once you get into college if you're doing an engineering or you know you're becoming an artist and you have to use that program you know all you know the shortcuts and tricks that you can use yeah. and what certain words they want like you 
need to understand in order to complete it. Okay. Now let's say, let, let, let's play a game here real quick. Let's say that Michael Wilburn is the principal for a day <laughs> and you get to change something at your school. Okay. You get to change something, you know, around this, these vota- you know, vocational uh, courses and offerings. What are you going to change? What do you think would be one change that you could make that would change the perception of the way kids think about it? Um, <laughs> I think announcing what kind of possibilities you could achieve from taking these classes, uh, which then will definitely spread awareness to it. And then also people will start thinking like, hmm, maybe if I take a certain amount of classes that aren't even that class, like it would help me get set up for college way easier than having to do all this last minute. Yeah. That was fun playing principal for the day. So maybe that your principal will listen to this and you never know. Right. All right. Now talk to me. We were also, while we were prepping, you mentioned something about engaging the next generation and you, and you talked about a program that you went into called the, you make it challenge. So, so talk to me about that. I'm excited to hear about this one. Uh, say, so, uh, it was 2019 Rockwell automation was presenting a challenge called the, you make it challenge where the next generation of young people, like maybe 19 and under, uh, you know, they would present an idea to their form, you know, how they can improve, invent, or somehow uh, make a machine or an invention better than it was before. Mm. And so once we put in the form, there was, you know, people went through hundreds of thousands of these submissions because it was like a really popular thing. Uh, and they picked 10 people who would go on to like this place where the public would actually vote. And then you would vote for the top three. And for me, I was creating a sanitation project for uh, Africa where it would just be a whole lot easier for sanitation. And also you could grow crops out of it. It was a very simple but neat design, and I got voted top, the top three. And then out of nowhere, it's like they say we, that I got invited to Automation Fair in Chicago, which for me was a pretty big thing at the time, mainly yeah. because uh, like at my age, you're not, you're not allowed to go. So that was definitely an experience. Uh, I didn't win. Uh, a person named Lucy Aw- Lisa Woods won. Uh, she was 18 at the time. I mean, 16 right. at the time. Uh, but she won. It, it was like a flood device. It was very neat. And it, what was crazy about it is we had to present in front of like 400 people. And it was like Rockwell's top CEOs and, you know, uh, everybody like that was on the top of Rockwell was there. It's definitely a very awesome experience for me. It sounds like, was it nerve wracking at all? Oh yeah, it was definitely (laughs) nerve wracking, especially the day that I had to present because like I sat there in the room, like waiting for all the other people before even the You Make It Challenge started. Like I had to wait for these people to introduce their ideas. And I just kept on, you know, like tapping my fingers and my feet, you know, like, am I actually going to be able to do this? Am, Am I going to bail out? Like, Right, right, right. It was definitely nerve wracking. <laughs> well, it taught, it gave, hey, that's an experience, though. You'll be able to take that. That's going to make you so much better. You know, it's, it's reps, right? Getting reps in front of talking in front of people. You know, you just you gain confidence. So, man, that sounds like it was a, that was a phenomenal experience for you. Yeah, it, it was. It was definitely a phenomenal and a lot of fun. I also met like uh, a lot of people there. That's really cool. That's awesome. So, I mean, that that's a wonderful way to engage the next generation. And a lot of people, I also think about, you know, job fairs and internships. So, so what does that look like for you at your school? I mean, you guys have that type of stuff or is it not, not really there or what? We do have internships and like some jobs for the school. Uh, Okay. Like last month it was announced like every day that there was an internship, but it wasn't very like clarified what you do in it. And like, they went through it very fast and it was only like once every day. Uh, an inter- like 
they mentioned a company called Integer. Like they're an engineering、uh, company who makes medicine. Ah,、oh, cool. You know, you hear Integer, you might think, well, maybe they're a car company or, you know, something. You don't actually、yeah. know what they do there, and、yeah. they, you know, they don't clarify on where you can look to see what they do.、Uh, and it's just, I think they could do a whole lot better on that. Yeah, no kidding. Absolutely. So I mean, it sounds like those opportunities there to maybe show up and and provide a little more information to students to let them know what what options are out there, right? Oh yeah, definitely. And maybe even you know I've talked to several people about this. If you're a manufacturer, you know have a have a sometimes not all of them can do it, but if you can have like an open day where you can actually go into a manufacturing plant and see some of the stuff, see the different departments, and see how see how it all works together. Because there's nothing quite like you know seeing it firsthand, right? Yeah, definitely.、Uh, also, I think like they need to. Maybe just have it where, like, there's just flyers all around the school, you know, presenting all these internships and jobs and you know ideas that you can see it. Right, right. Okay. Now I'm curious from your standpoint. You're a ninth grader. You have a smartphone. I know you're engaged in, in different things. You're on LinkedIn. You're 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 doing your thing. Now, from a social media standpoint, let's let's talk to the, maybe the the industrial leaders out there. You know where are you at? Where where are you engaging? Where do you go to learn and look some of this stuff? Is it Instagram? Is it other places? Where 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 are you spending time? Uh, well, I think most of my generation, like, they're definitely spending time on like researching on how to do stuff, or if they're just you know looking through stuff, it's definitely TikTok or Instagram, where、okay. most of the young generation resides. Uh, definitely like right there, and also, like. If you do go on those platforms, you need to be very active on it. Like you can't just, you know, do something every month. Like it has to be every day that you have to be active because, like, they're just going to keep on scrolling if they see it once or twice. Yeah. So you kind of need to be in that feed consistently. Oh yeah. So I you know, definitely we lean into Instagram, but we we haven't tried TikTok. So what, what what's gonna what's the advice for for making it happen on TikTok for for manufacturing? For TikTok, it it definitely needs to be like short and maybe even just advertising it. And usually, when I see like you know manufacturers advertisements, I, I was it's very bland on how they present their company. And、so、does they, it need to have some funny, some like some some fun into it? Yeah, it needs to have fun, some fun and like kick into it. So maybe like some. Moving, you know, words or something like that, mainly to catch、uh, the viewer's attention. I got like, you. If if you're just talking right here, I don't like you're creating an ad. Sometimes, like you know, just having things pop up over the head or you know, zooming in the camera,、uh, occasionally, like that definitely、right. would attract my attention if I was scrolling down. Right. Okay. Well, that that's been helpful right there. I mean, the, the TikTok. I think Eco S Y needs to lean into TikTok, Michael. You, 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 we'll get some followers, right? Yeah, definitely. Even like this little part where you're just talking, but like you know, you have cool animations, or maybe even just like a slideshow of what's going on. That would definitely be good. This has been fun. So let's let's talk a little bit for for just you. Yeah, I think you're pursuing some great things, but talk to me. What what do you enjoy doing for fun? I definitely enjoy playing video games. <laughs> video gamer, okay. What's your favorite、yeah. game? Um, probably Fortnite and Call of Duty. They're definitely both very good games, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, you can also like engage with a lot of people, which is pretty good. That's really cool. What、yeah. else? Uh, I think it would also be just playing like basketball for fun. Like that physical activity is just a lot of fun. Um. And of course, building stuff. I really enjoy building stuff. It, if you ask me to build something, if even if it's out of Legos or paper, I'm going to build it because it's just a lot of fun for me. Now, didn't you redo a car or something like that? Yeah. So、uh, we're restoring a 1947 Plymouth right now.、Uh, <laughs> it's kind of been slowed down recently, but of course, it's getting colder outside, and you know, it's just not that comfortable when you're working out in the cold. <laughs> right. Right.、Uh, but. It's a lot of fun, though. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, so、uh, you have an awesome family, like your mom, your dad, everything you guys got going on there. 
you know, very active out there. You know, give it, give us some insight. So, what is it like being, you know, part of the the TW controls? Everything that's going on YouTube is it, it is it as it fun as it looks? Um, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like most days, it's definitely a lot of fun. Uh, you know, just hang out, playing like games, or even just going to like the PLC lab to record videos with Dad. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Sometimes, you know, they have, you know, you got to do other stuff. Uh, and that's when it get, gets kind of bland. Right. Um, or, you know, if you don't want to play a board game, it's like, you know, you're kind of mad for 30 minutes and then finally you get back into it. Right. Right. Yeah. I hear you, buddy. I hear you. Now, what do you enjoy? So, you know, I always like to, to talk to our, our heroes. What podcast do you listen to? I'm curious. Are you a podcast guy at all? Yeah, I, I actually do listen to a lot of pack podcasts. I definitely listen to Eco S Y. Okay. Um, uh, any others? I definitely like my dad's podcast. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's like, I don't want to listen to it because I'm not interested. But others, you know, it's very interesting because he really talks through it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we like we love his podcast. With talks, <laughs> talks with Tim, right? Yep, Talks with Tim. That's it. That's it. I love it. I love it. Well, I'll tell you what. I always like to play a, a game. It's called a lightning round. Okay. So I'm just going to fire off some things at you and we'll see what uh, comes back as we want our eco ask why listeners to get to know you a little bit better. Okay. Okay. All right. What's your favorite food? Uh, pizza. Definitely a pizza. Is it a particular kind of pizza? Uh, pepperoni. I am a very big pepperoni guy. Pepperoni guy. Okay. What about drinks? Pepsi, uh, Coke, others? Root beer. I really root, enjoy root beer. Root beer. Okay. Okay. All right. So what's uh, what's your favorite class? Algebra. <laughs> Algebra. Okay. Yeah. Favorite teacher of all time? Um, I think my seventh grade math teacher. I think that was my favorite teacher ever. Okay. What was their name? Uh, I, I don't want to say her name, but... Uh, okay. She, she was definitely very nice and like, you know, she, she understood if you're struggling or not. And so like, I kind of struggled a lot, but she helped, you know, even it out. So okay. I think that was the best teacher I had. What's your, what's your favorite app on your phone? Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. That's yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Def just Instagram. Like if you look at my, uh, how many times I spend on an app, Instagram would be at like top of the list three hours above any. <laughs> I got you. Now, what about uh, what's your favorite sports team? I don't really watch sports that much, but if I had to choose, it would definitely be uh, like the Bulls in basketball. Okay. Uh, in football, it would have to be uh, the Panthers. Okay. And then in like soccer, it'd definitely be Team USA. Um, <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I don't really watch that many sports, though, so not okay. really know much about it. Very cool. Now, what? So, are you are you thinking about? I'm trying to think about colleges. What's your favorite college? Oh, uh, I think for me, it would definitely be uh, the University of Alabama in Huntsville because okay. I've actually been there, and like it, it's just a very good school. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. All right. Now, what's the favorite place you've ever been before? Virginia Beach. It's, okay. it's just, it feels like home, but it's not home. And right. it's a beach, so it's, yeah. <laughs> can't, can't go wrong with a beach, right? Yeah. All right. Last question, buddy. I ask everybody this. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Definitely dogs. No cats. Right. I can't right, deal it. with cats. <laughs> Can't deal with cats. Okay. I love it. I love it. All right, Michael, this has been fun, my friend. So we've got to know you. Now, Eco asks why. We end with the why. If you're a listener, you know you know that's where we're getting ready to go. So if somebody wants to know what Michael Wilburn's why is, what is it? I think for me, it's really being able to go hands-on into a machine or Something that just includes my hands moving around and being able to get them dirty or fixing something. I yeah. think that's really, that's the passion I really love. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, buddy, you're going to do phenomenal things. 
I can't wait to watch your career grow. You're just going, you're just going to make a, such a big impact. And you know what, just by coming on and sharing your story, you know, this is going to be a pretty cool. This is people going, going to really maybe start thinking differently about vocation and using their hands and, and trades. And this is what we need more of. We need more conversations like this. So uh, anything else you want to share? No, not really. I think it's been a lot of fun, you know, being able to do this podcast and hopefully I can do it more with like other podcasts too. Absolutely. I'm sure it's, it's, this is going to be your launching point right here. So it just, just remember us when you get to be big and famous, please. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, it's been a blast, but I hope you have a great day. It's been a lot of fun for those out there who want to check out the show notes. We'll probably hook you up with Michael's Instagram account so you can be, be one of his followers because he's, he's posting some fun stuff. And uh, Michael, hope you have a great day, buddy. You too. You know, Michael, he's got such a bright future. That was so much fun just hearing his insight, hearing all about the things that are happening at his high school, how he's just thinking about engaging the next generation, the You Make It Challenge, social media, job fairs, internships. We covered it all. Video games, so much fun. The next generation, their voice matters. So we're so thankful that he took the time to share with us today. You know, with these types of conversations, really make an impact. So we're so thankful. We're blessed that, that he shared with us. Now, the war stories, we want them to keep coming. The good, the bad, the funny, the stuff you tell around the water cooler, the stuff you tell at the, at the dinner table. So go to the show notes, connect with us there, give us a five-star rating, write a review, it makes a big difference. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. And remember, keep asking why.